Uh, apologies, uh, was saying that they spent most of the afternoon trying to deal with the internet connectivity issues, which uh, may have fixed, um, hopefully have fixed, um, just waiting to get some feedback that people can actually hear me now, but I did spend a pretty good amount of time out in the yard with some jury rig tree trimmers. There was a branch resting on the telecom line. I guess there was some connection because the tension was uh, was off or something. And anyway, it seems like that has fixed the problem. Um, could just be, as a scientist, correlation and causation. Um, never know 100% if that's what it was. But it is awfully suspicious that the uh, upload speed was one megabyte per second or less and there were 40% missed packets right up until the point that we removed that branch, and as soon as I checked it thereafter, it was back to usual. So, uh, well, anyway, that's a bit of an aside, um, but I think I think we're probably good to go with this in future sessions. The weather on this end now looks pretty clear for the duration of the remaining storm in California, so uh, hopefully won't have uh, those problems moving forward. Uh, let's see here. Uh, just want to double check that there aren't a bunch of people in the wrong session. It seems like there might be a lot of people waiting over uh, in the other live session. Apologies, it gets quite difficult to manage these things um, on top of everything else. Um, just trying to see if there's anybody waiting over here. Well, there are, but uh, maybe they'll figure it out. I just wanted to check and see how many it was. Anyway, anyhow, uh, looks like most of you found your way here. Uh, so I'm actually gonna jump right into the, well, let me do a quick summary. Uh, the storm is still out there, and despite many folks who said, where is the big wind and the big rain, uh, a lot of it has now arrived or is arriving imminently in different parts of the state. So I think I'm just going to jump right to the radar right now because I think it tells the story pretty well. So uh, hold on while I jump over to that. And you will see, once again, uh, the radar image. I'm going to start uh, in, in the north. I'm going to start in the Bay Area. Uh, get my drawing tool ready. Um, so there has been, uh, over the past hour or so, a pretty big escalation in the wind across a lot of the Bay Area and the Central Valley. Uh, looks like the power outages uh, have really uh, increased quite a bit in recent days. Excuse me, recent hours. It just feels like days. Um, and I want to point out a few features as to why. So this convective band right here, uh, there's some individual sort of training cells within it, uh, and there's a couple down here. There's one moving over Marin, there's one kind of wrapping up into Sonoma County. Uh, the Believe it or not, it doesn't look that impressive on radar, although it is getting a little bit more intense as it moves over land, that the Storms Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma, usually the, the place that issues severe thunderstorm and tornado watches uh, just highlighted this region as having at least a slight chance of generating a tornadic uh, thunderstorm in the next one to two hours. Uh, so this is that robust convection that we were talking about earlier and it is starting to materialize. It took its sweet time in, in popping up but it is there now and actually if we zoom in um, this is starting to look a little more intense now. So there is a line of what is probably torrential rain and very strong wind gusts from the central Santa Cruz Mountains uh, to the suburbs just south of San Jose right now, but all of this is moving northward, so if you're in the South Bay and eventually the East Bay, you're probably going to get this in the next hour. Um, this is part of why people have seen such a ramp up in the winds. People are now reporting 50 to 70 mile an hour gusts in this area, and depending, you know, there's not a, there's no lightning associated with it right now, but it is intensifying. This predict Storm Prediction Center did highlight the potential for an offshore water sprout or even a brief tornado over land in this. Let's see if there's any uh, rotational, anything interesting on the rotational velocity plots in terms of uh, storm risk. Well, it's a little bit hard to tell because this black hole here, that's that's the actual radar site. So this is actually right on top of the Mount Amunam radar site. You might get a better view of this 
as it departs. So it's actually difficult to tell. I'm going to turn that off because you can't tell much. But these are starting to intensify. This is probably where the strongest winds and rains in the parts of the South Bay and the East Bay are going to come from of the whole storm. So hold on, it's not there yet. Up in the North Bay, uh, really from Mill Valley up into San Rafael, looks like there's some more intense rain and gusty wind right now. But really, it's 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 these sorts of features and these these you know there could be uh, there was a special marine warning for this line while it was over the water. There might be some special weather statements or something issued soon here. Uh, I'll quickly jump up to the Sacramento radar, get a bit, bit of a farther north look. Looks like there's some pretty intense, uh, actually some convective bands and maybe even a training cell up just east of Clear Lake. So there could be some flooding, squally weather up here. Finally, the area in uh, western Yolo County has dried out a bit. As soon as I say that, though, there's some new stuff popping up right over the coast range. I bring that up because this is a region that's seen four or five inches of rain today in some spots, and there's widespread flooding. Uh, that's something that's been prevalent in the Weather West comments section as well as elsewhere. Bit of a break in the snow right now on some parts of the Sierra, but there's more to come. Just wait. Um, I'll go back to the Bay Area quickly, take a look at this. Uh, I would expect, okay, so there's some bigger stuff going on down south. I'll keep this animated. Again, uh, while we're on this conversation, some something interesting might happen with this blob. I'll come back to it in a moment. Let's go down to Vandenberg. This is the Central Coast radar. So here, there's some, there, okay, there's a whole lot going on. So there's a the special marine warning. This was for the potential for water spouts or damaging wind gusts offshore. Now it looks like there are flash flood warnings. Looks like this one was just issued for a broad part of southern San Luis Obispo County, the northern, northwestern part of Santa Barbara County, and then for most of the rest of Santa Barbara County, a separate flash flood warning, uh, including city of Santa Barbara, Ventura, Oxnard, and sort of extending even into the western suburbs of LA, and so Simi Valley area as well. Uh, this is a long duration flash flood warning. In fact, it's possible that there will be continuous flash flood warnings issued, especially uh, for essentially this region uh, for the next 24 to 48 hours. So this is just the beginning. And I don't care how unimpressive the radar looks. It's already raining heavily. There's already flash flooding developing this region, and it's only going to get worse from there. Uh, zooming in a little bit, uh, there is a nice, this looks like it's a bit of a narrow, cold, maybe a, a narrow cold frontal rain band type feature trying to develop across San Luis Obispo and be uh, County and between Santa Maria and, and San Luis Obispo proper. So likely some flooding and some damaging wind gusts going on in here. As mentioned earlier, there were multiple wind gusts above 80 miles an hour reported along the central coast and some of those winds have recently intensified as this convective activity has developed as was earlier discussed and is as the low uh, itself makes it closer to the coast. Let's go even further east into Los Angeles. And this is about the easternmost radar that is interesting right now at this point. Again, this doesn't look very dramatic, but the problem is the radar site is uh, here up by Ojai on a hill. But the problem is there's some, the transverse ranges right along this line are very tall and it's blocking the beam. So you can't see the super heavy rain that's falling uh, across the transverse ranges up in here. So already there's very heavy rain falling up there. You're just not seeing it on the radar. What you are seeing is the moderate to heavy rain over the more, over the closer uh, lower elevation areas closer to the coast. This is going to continue to fill in and intensify uh, as the the night goes on into tomorrow and possibly even into parts of Tuesday. So I'm going to go back to the San Francisco radar, just check in on it, uh, see what's going on since there is a lot rapidly developing. Yep, this continues to blow up, some stronger winds. We'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, I'm going to check the questions really quickly, uh, see what see what we're, 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 we're looking at. Um, yeah, folks reporting that after a day of fairly calm winds, winds are now gusting up above 50, 60 miles an hour in some places. There's a lot of power out. There's a lot of trees coming down, a lot of power lines down. In fact, let me share, uh, well, let me just first see what questions there is. People are reporting flooding in Santa Barbara already. Probably not severe flooding yet, but that might, is probably going to get worse. Um, let's see here. Yeah, the rain is now relentless in Santa Barbara County. Unfortunately, that is just getting started. Uh, 
hearing reports that the snow has turned to rain at South Lake Tahoe level, which is a little bit frustrating, but they did get a foot of snow before that happened. So, um, you know, there, there was significant uh, rainfall. Uh, Big Weasel is saying that, that Santa Barbara just got an inch of rain in an hour, which would be pretty concerning in the sense that that's a lot of rain to begin with, but also it suggests that the rain is falling in that part of the state a lot more heavily than the radar would suggest. So that's not what we want to see, given that it already shows a lot. Um, the report from Sacramento right now that looks uh, bright and sunny but extremely windy. Yeah, you're in between squall lines. Expect some more intense showers and thunderstorms later with potentially even stronger winds. Uh, Half Moon Bay now gusting 67 miles an hour. That's a, that's a damaging gust for sure. Um, that's, those are some big winds. Um, yeah, so a, a lot of folks who were saying there wasn't much going on uh, earlier are now reporting pretty dramatic conditions at the moment up in Northern California. If you're in LA to San Diego, you're still saying what storm because it is essentially raining lightly on the west side of LA with partly cloudy conditions or sunny conditions, relatively warm east and south of that, but just wait, it is coming. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I, I do want to share a different screen here for a moment. You're going to see me share uh, instead uh, some sa satellite imagery. Uh, so um, yeah, that's a classic uh, classic spinning low if I've ever seen one. No, but right now, obviously, the center of circulation is essentially getting pretty close to being west, or just west of San Francisco. So it's right about here. And all this activity, there is some occasional lightning being reported. So there was some lightning up in Sonoma County uh, offshore. Um, not a huge amount of lightning. So, you know, this is relatively low top convection, but there is, there is some occasionally. In fact, that line I mentioned up in Lake County is generating some cloud to ground lightning strikes. So that is a thunderstorm. That's probably why there's some flooding going on up there. And you can see that here's the clear slot over Sacramento, but it is just an isolated clear slot. There are showers and thunderstorms spiraling from the west, and the models can suggest that this will continue through the night and that there, there will be some intense showers and thunderstorms with locally damaging winds and, and torrential downpours capable of producing flash floods in this whole region through the evening. And again, the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted the South Bay, including Santa Cruz Mountains, uh, adjacent water areas as being at risk of a brief water spout or tornado or two over the next couple of hours from uh, that band that I was talking about. Um, so zooming out though, uh, it is, if you take the, the bigger view, um, is of course, then it becomes more obvious that the storm is just getting started in Southern California. It is mostly sunny in San Diego, but there is a major flash flood event uh, evolving over Santa Barbara and Ventura counties, and in LA it's just starting to rain. So this is a huge storm. You can see these crosses, these occasional lightning flashes over land or offshore. There will probably be more of them in this sector, even though it looks clear right now, it's probably the most unstable part of the storm. The problem is now that this atmospheric river is draped across uh, Southern California, it's gonna stay draped. And you can kind of see that this storm system is now starting to lift to the north and east as expected. That's going to cause this band to stall out somewhere between central Bar Santa Barbara County and Orange County over the next 24 to 48 hours. Concerns over a stall have increased, and that is not good news. That means that the flood threat somewhere between about Santa Barbara and the San Bernardino County Mountains has gone up from already very high levels. So this is a really serious situation. Uh, the, the, the Weather Prediction Center, as I mentioned earlier, has issued a four out of four high, the highest possible risk rating for flash flooding beginning later tonight into tomorrow and also potentially into Tuesday, uh, moving progressively eastward from Santa Barbara County to including LA County, including the urban area. So including the city of LA, that does not always happen. This, this, this ex very high end flood risk extends to uh, the freeways and the urban areas and, and it itself. So uh, this is an unusual situation. And I'm gonna pull up some, uh, some model data in a moment. But I just wanted to show the big picture on the satellite image because, you know, there are these clear slots. People are getting these clear slots, but then there is a lot of other stuff going on uh, as well in between that is causing some progressively bigger problems. Uh, and I just want to show the power outage map of, of California. I think that's what you should see up on the screen. Yep, good, perfect. It's, it's showing up nicely. 
Um, this is uh, a major power outage situation. So there's now over 350,000 customers out. And again, there's between two and three people per customer. So this is essentially getting close. There's probably about a million people now without power in California. That's a major, uh, that's a major thing unto itself. It's interesting that it kind of uh, has ringed the Central Bay Area. There are the, the, some of the counties with the fewest outages are Contra Costa, Marin, and San Francisco, with every other county surrounding it with much more. It looks like right now Solano is probably hardest hit in relative terms, where about a third of all customers in Solano County are without power. Yolo County, Napa County, pretty high up there too. Uh, and then, uh, short of that, is where the strongest ones have been so far, Monterey County, uh, where there's uh, over almost 33,000 customers, probably about 150, yeah, well, probably about, uh, sorry, probably about 90 something thousand people. And then San Luis Obispo County, where power is out to about a third of the whole county. Again, uh, that's about 30,000 out of 130,000. So again, a pretty significant fraction of customers. And this number, by the way, uh, up here, the this has been really trending upward all day. So this is getting worse, not better, and it might peak uh, even higher. Uh, take a quick look at questions uh, again uh, while I've got that map up, and then I'm gonna look at some radar data. I, I mean, excuse me, some model data again. Um, Yeah, some folks concerned about the most recent HRRR, uh, the HER run. Um, honestly, that's one of those acronyms that some people say it, say what it sounds like, and some people just spell out the letters. Uh, I go with the, uh, the the letters because it's difficult to discern what HER means. It just sort of sounds like I'm mumbling. Um, let's see here. Um, All right, I'm going to now, uh, let's take a quick look at the radar and then I'll jump to model model data. Uh, or actually, you know what? I'm just gonna look at the radar quickly on my end to see if anything crazy's popped up. Okay, we're, we're good to wait a little bit. I'm gonna show the model data instead since people have been asking. All right, here we go. Here is the, the HER model, the HRRR, the High Resolution Rapid Refresh Model, which is not the be all and end all, but it is a decent representation. And I'm showing it partly because it is similar to the other high resolution models in this case. So it's not an outlier, it's, it's fairly close to the median. And I'm gonna look at a slightly older run cycle of this because uh, this one, the, every six hours they run one that goes out for 48 hours, which gets us most of the way through the storm. So what you're seeing right now are these intense showers and thunderstorms over northern and central California bringing torrential downpours, very strong winds, maybe some lightning and even a, maybe a brief tornado or two. Then you see as we go past the next uh, few hours, this, this intense narrow cold frontal rain band that we saw on the radar near San Luis Obispo uh, starts to move inland and eastward. Uh, across uh, Southern California, the transverse ranges. This is the first time when the flash flooding is going to dramatically escalate because it's already ongoing, there's already been heavy rain, but then this line is gonna bring one to two inch per hour rainfall rates. So really extreme rainfall rates. This is when the first really big piece of flood threat is gonna ramp up. Uh, and this is uh, just in an hour or so from now. So this is relatively imminent. You can see that it sort of marches eastward toward uh, the LA basin. The Santa Barbara County may actually get a bit of a break, but the LA County is really gonna get raked uh, over the coals uh, later this evening. This is around 9 p.m. Pacific time. And also it's backing up a bit. You can see in Northern California, this low continues to spin off these spokes of showers and thunderstorms, each of which could bring, again, torrential downpours, uh, some, some very strong winds, uh, things like that. But here's the thing. So it, it, if this were the end of the storm, in LA uh, around uh, 4 or 5 a.m. It looks like, okay, things are tapering off. This frontal band's moving eastward. It looks like we're almost done. But here, herein lies the problem. Uh, that is not the end of the storm. And were that the end of the storm, there would be some moderate flooding tonight, and then that would probably be the end of the story. But look at what happens. Uh, as this frontal band, as this atmospheric river actually moves back westward, it retrogrades, uh, and then stalls somewhere between, again, Santa Barbara and LA County. San Diego may still not have seen much, if any, rain yet. We're talking about 5 p.m. tomorrow. It might still be dry in San Diego, but now parts of Ventura and L.A. counties will have seen 24 hours straight of heavy rain. And then 
uh, there is a further intensification of the rain uh, tomorrow evening. So at about, uh, right now the, the, the HER model is showing this happening at about uh, 5 to 6 p.m. On, uh, on, on Monday. So the Monday evening commute is going to be a complete disaster, to say the least. In fact, it's going to be bad enough that I would recommend that everybody stay home in L.A. if they possibly can, because this is going to cause major flooding serious major flooding because this then stalls out uh, Monday night across LA County as it intensifies. Look at that. There's a narrow cold frontal rain band. This is torrential rain four hours in this model over LA after 24 hours of rain. This moves extremely slowly eastward. Finally then Orange County and San Diego get their heavy rainfall. It, flooding risk is down there. It will be brief but not as intense because they won't have gotten all the previous rainfall with this. Uh, but I mean, look at this here. I mean, this is this is just uh, a very long period of heavy rain, and then even then, once the rain band moves through, there's still th scattered showers and thunderstorms to deal with thereafter in LA County, which could cause uh, further problems. Uh, so, what does this look like in terms of uh, the total uh, precipitation from the HER uh, the HER model? Well, let's, uh, this is just for the next, so this is not the whole storm, so actually i got to go back to the 18 Zulu run. This is a 48-hour precipitation from essentially from the present to then. And look at this. Down in uh, L.A. County, the mountains, the transverse ranges, the gabalons above, we're looking at somewhere between 10 to 20 inches of rain. That is not good. This is 10 to 20 inches of additional rain beyond what has fallen at this point. That is an extremely large amount of rain. Uh, but here's the other thing. That's the mountains. Coastal Plain, LA, we're showing four to six plus inches of rain in the, in the actual lowlands near downtown LA and near the coast. That is also an extremely high 48-hour uh, rainfall total for this part of the world, given especially that it's falling on the heels of already saturated conditions. This is why there's so much concern. Uh, further west, across the transverse ranges, into Santa Barbara County, we're still looking at additional 10 plus inches on top of the several inches that's already fallen today. These are very high numbers in context. And right now, I would say I'm actually more concerned now and today about LA County and Ventura County than anywhere else in the state. It's a little bit further east from my initial concern of sort of from Santa Barbara into Ventura. Now it's shifting more from Ventura into Los Angeles County. And that's not so good because A, there's a lot more people living in LA County downstream of some major watersheds that can flood quite seriously and debris flow corridors, but also B, uh, this is a region that has not seen as much recent experience with severe flooding. So the only thing I gotta say in the favor of the transverse ranges further west is there is recent local experience with extensive flooding and debris flows. So at least folks sort of know what they're dealing with. Uh, this is going to be a bigger problem in LA County because there isn't as much recent experience with this, and these are very high, concerningly high totals over a 48-hour period, given that conditions are already wet and saturated, and that the hourly rainfall rates could be very high. So this won't just be, you know, four to six inches at lower elevations evenly spaced out over a 48-hour period. A lot of this is going to fall in a few hours during this interval. And just to round things out, uh, just to show that you know there is a significant amount of convective available to potential energy. It's moving inland right now. This is that band of stronger convection over the Bay Area right now um, that'll taper off later in the evening, but there's spokes of instability uh, coming in later. But then look what happens into tomorrow. This is the early morning hours, and then into tomorrow across the central coast into Southern California is that instability, and the Central Valley could be some afternoon thunderstorms tomorrow. But that instability starts to fill in across portions of Southern California. And so there's some thunderstorm potential down there too. Uh, so I'll uh, take a look again at the power edge map. That has increased again. It's up by another 20,000 customers out of power just since 10 minutes ago when I last checked on this live stream. Uh, I'm going to go back and look at uh, the questions again to see here. Uh, let's see if there's any specific new questions. Um, folks saying in LA they can't distinguish between some loud weather related noises, thunder or strong winds. Well, let me zoom in. I'll go back to the radar. 
Um, a question about the Coachella Valley and the flood risk. I don't believe in this pattern it's at its extreme of risk, although I'm not certain about that, so I need to check. Uh, you can probably get a good sense of this from the, the National Weather Service, but I want to be certain about that. Um, I think it's likely to be a rain-shadowed region more than other places, but there could be some instances of very heavy rain at the mountains above that drain into the Coachella Valley and can cause some problems. So this is not necessarily like the Hurricane Hillary event. This is going to be quite different in terms of the spatial character and the intensity of precipitation. Um, let me see if I can switch this back over to radar. I want to show I want to show that. Instead, you'll see where is the radar? Radar scope. Good old radar scope. Okay, so radar is back up on screen. Um, all right, here. Uh, all right, so the radar is back. Let's see what's going on. Folks reporting very heavy rain over San Diego. Sorry, San Jose, but no lightning. Uh, that is in this corridor right here, and that makes total sense. I'm not seeing any lightning, but I sure am seeing some very heavy rain and presumably some strong winds there. Also down towards Morgan Hill, another another band of this, another big convective blob moving up. And there's just sort of these random convective showers blowing up right over the central Bay Area too. So right now, the most interesting stuff is going on in the South Bay um, and continuing across the interior of Monterey County. So the mountains above Big Sur are generating these convective bands. But here, you know, like these, these bands offshore still Again, they don't look like much on the radar right now, but they're going to probably blow up more as they get close to the coast. So that's just going to be the continuum. It's just going to be on and off and on and off and on and off. Um, let's go. Okay, uh, I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, yeah, so there, there is some interesting stuff going on here um, across the South Bay. Uh, this, you know, this line in particular is about to come into Livermore. That's you're probably going to hit with some torrential downpours and some stronger winds. Now this cell popping up be between Richmond and Berkeley over the bay. San Jose again. Uh, yeah, and this, this, uh, let's see if there's anything on the rotational velocity. It's interesting. It's still kind of a mess right now. Um, I don't know why the, this data is so noisy right now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much just too, it's, it's too noisy to say much. Um, looks like Mendocino County is getting hit harder again after a lull earlier. Uh, so too is the, the winters area. Uh, let's go down central coast again, see what's going on. Again, there's the big flash flood warning boxes already. And I think that some of these are going to remain in effect for a very long time. Uh, you can see that there, you know, this, 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 this plume is just, I mean, the transverse ranges essentially run like this above Santa Barbara, uh, Ojai, Ventura. And all of this, this moisture plume is just running into these ranges. And there's already rain, heavy, heavy rain falling right along the coast, uh, you know, in Santa Barbara. But it's, it's a lot heavier in, you know, in this, in this part of the box across the mountains. So uh, it's, it's coming in there. And you can still see uh, the, the, these, these vestiges of these, these sort of convective elements. They're all sort of on, on shore now. Um, this may be the feature, uh, actually, that the, the HER model is catching up on, the, the, the sort of this intense downpour region that's going to start shifting eastward tonight, initially, before stalling out. Let's go to some, since folks are saying that some of the, the LA conditions are a little juicier than, than otherwise might be indicated. So here's one radar site. This is near Ojai. This may not be capturing the full story over LA, so let's keep going east. Let's go to the Santa Ana Mountains, and then we see LA. So yeah, LA is starting to get some significant rain too. Um, pretty uniformly across the city, nothing extreme. Um, I don't think you're hearing any thunder in LA at this point, so that's probably wind or something else, but there is intensifying rain. And again, I really uh, west of about this line, I don't really think the rain is going to stop for 24 to 36 hours. It's going to be a very long event, and it's going to intensify right up to the evening commute tomorrow, potentially. So, you know, this whole area is home to a whole lot of people, and uh, there is a significant risk of major flooding now developing, especially later tonight into tomorrow, maybe into Tuesday, especially 
uh, sort of more in this region into Tuesday as you go a little bit east. So whether uh, whether this storm ends up stalling out, you can kind of see how this trajectory is just pushing all of this moisture uh, inland like this. That trajectory is just going to stay stuck in that position essentially for a long time. So if, you know, right now, the, as was shown on the HER, shows a stalling uh, later tomorrow into Tuesday somewhere sort of in, in this area. And again, that includes the whole LA metro and then some. So there's, you know, millions of people in that, in that stall zone. That's a little bit farther east than when it looked like it might be closer to here, where it might, down here it might stay dry for the whole period until about Tuesday. Over here, things might start to dry out. Uh, well, maybe I should say closer to here uh, because Santa Barbara might still be on the fringe. But really, it is, I think, my, the area of greatest concern for flooding, high-end flood risk, uh, and this aligns mostly with the Weather Prediction Center. Again, this is coarsely drawn, uh, but essentially, you know, something more or less along these lines. Uh, this is sort of, you know, that's that's sort of my thinking about where the greatest flood risk will be. Doesn't mean there can't be flooding up here. There's flash flood warning in effect for crying out loud. And late late in the storm, there'll be some flood risk down here too. But I think that this region is going to be, you know, the the part of the the region, uh, the state that that is at really high risk of major flooding to it overnight into tomorrow and then potentially into parts of Tuesday. All right, let's see, let's go back to San Francisco since there's some, yeah, these, these continue to look pretty, a uh, little bit spicy, uh, especially this one down by Morgan Hill. That's That's got some pretty strong reflectivity now, so that's a pretty good sell. Wouldn't be surprised if there's lightning out of this soon, and this is looking pretty robust too. So again, headed into Livermore, the East Bay. If Even if there's no lightning, there's definitely torrential rain, maybe some small hail, and, and very strong winds, probably the strongest winds of the day in some places you'll see out of these little these little cells moving through, not so little. And again, as, as I said, just as I you know mentioned, this, is, this line is already starting to pick up a little bit of steam, so um, we're just going to continue to see that pop up. Let's go up to Sacramento, see what's going on. Um, yeah, we don't have the best view up there. Um, there is some rain filling on the west side of the valley again, but if we go to Sacramento, um, sorry, San Francisco, I'm just going to leave this radar up while I take a look at a few more things, answer a few more questions. Uh, let's see. Um, Jeremy Smith's reporting a three three feet of storm surge at Point Reyes Station, which is a little bit interesting given that the winds wouldn't necessarily be conducive to a storm surge coming down to Tomales Bay, but I guess there is low pressure. Uh, there might actually be some surge within Tomales Bay itself. I don't know exactly what's going on there, but that's, that's interesting. Um... Again, this will not be a really big wind event east of Santa Barbara. There might be some winds, but generally speaking, this is more of an issue uh, for winds along the central coast and parts of Northern California and a much bigger flood risk for Southern California. Uh, Ishmael reporting heavy rain and wind gusts to about 75 miles an hour. That's impressive. I don't know where that is exactly, but um, ah, the Point Reyes Tide Station rather than Point Reyes um, Station itself. I don't know exactly where the oh, so I'm assuming the Point Reyes Tide Station is out on the the point on the on the peninsula uh, in West Marin, and if that's the case, that makes more sense. That is pretty impressive then, three foot storm surge. The reason why that makes more sense is you have strong winds from the south and southeast that would be piling up ocean water uh, probably on the south side uh, of, of the, the, the peninsula there. So uh, maybe some significant storm surge into Stinson Beach and Bolinas area potentially. Um, 
Yes, it looks like the Weather Service just issued some sort of something for, for that cell that I was talking about near Morgan Hill. Uh, it's not a severe thunderstorm warning. It looks like it's a special weather statement, but I'm just sort of curious what what it says. Um, I'm just glancing at... Um, yeah, so it's a statement regarding winds of 50 to 55 miles an hour and small hill along with some torrential downpour. So pretty much what we've been talking about uh, for this, this interesting uh, blob of convection that just moved through Morgan Hill and is just about to move over more remote areas uh, to the north of Morgan Hill. That's kind of a, like Mount uh, Hamilton area. But again, similar feature moving through Livermore. And there is more developing, you know, to the south. I, I don't think this is the last round of cells like this tonight. Another interesting blob in northern Napa County. Um, so I think uh, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna keep this session short uh, and take advantage of the fact that the connections stayed good the whole time. Uh, I will probably have another live session later this evening, another quick 30-minute session uh, at Time TBD. So if you subscribe, you'll be notified uh, via YouTube. If you don't, I'll, I'll announce it on the Weather West comment section and on social media, because I think that there will be a further progression of a bunch of different things that we've been talking about uh, over the next few hours. So TBD, 30-minute session tonight, and then tomorrow... Uh, at 9 a.m., so hesitate to call it a, an early session, but it is earlier in the morning. Uh, I have to. I actually needed to do that one a little bit earlier since uh, I'll, I'll be on the Weather Channel after that uh, in the morning. Uh, but I uh, I think that uh, I'll have a, a session tonight, a good 30 minutes later on, check in, then a longer one, probably an hour at 9 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow morning. And that probably won't be the last one of the week, uh, but it's all I've scheduled for now. So there, again, to, to reiterate, there's a TBD one just in a few hours, another quick one, 30 minutes later tonight. Uh, I will uh, have another one for sure, a, a longer, more organized one, 9 a.m. tomorrow, Pacific time. Uh, and then uh, I'll probably continue to update with these shorter sessions uh, thereafter, depending on what happens. So... Uh, Again, the most, you know, this is this was a significant windstorm for some parts of Northern California. There, are, there have been gusts above 80 miles an hour in some places, some of which are ongoing. There are mass power outages, probably getting close to a million people now without power uh, throughout California, mostly centered on the Central Coast and parts of the Central Valley. Uh, there are uh, squall lines of showers and thunderstorms moving through the Bay Area that will continue to for the rest of the evening. Uh, and uh, that will bring occasional periods of very heavy rainfall and very strong winds. Um, your mileage may vary. If you get hit by these, you could be very intense. If you don't, then the storm may be partly over in Northern California. But where the storm is not over and where it is just beginning is in Southern California. There are flash flood warnings already for San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara counties. Some of these are going to stay in effect for a long, long time, and there's going to be a lot of flooding and a lot of rain to come. There is concern regarding the stalling of the atmospheric river moisture plume right across L.A. and Ventura counties tomorrow into Tuesday. That is not a good place for it to stall, uh, ge geologically speaking or uh, population-wise. There's a lot of people who live in floodplains. There's a lot of places that can flood. Uh, there's a lot of places that don't have the ability to handle a whole lot of water from a debris flow an urban flood and, a, uh, and, a, and a, even a smaller river flood perspective. So the flood risk, if anything, is actually a slightly higher than it appeared originally for LA County and Ventura specifically. You just aren't there yet. And once the rain starts in LA, it's probably not really going to meaningfully taper off for over 24 hours, probably more like 36 hours. So get ready for it. It's still coming. If you're, you're already dealing with significant flooding near Santa Barbara, and it's likely to get significantly worse from where it is currently. See you in a few hours, and then again at 9 a.m. in the morning, uh, Pacific time tomorrow. So uh, stay safe out there, and uh, see you again soon.